In the previous video we set up DHCP on our test domain controller which is currently not a domain controller and we also set up a test PC. In this video we're actually going to set up the domain controller. So we're just going to double click on our test DC and bring it up. Previously in the older versions of Windows, I think prior to 2012 R2, we used to be able to run a thing called DC Promo, which is a domain controller promotion. You can see now that they've actually moved this into a wizard in the server manager. So we're actually going to click OK and we're going to go to the start menu and server manager. We're then going to select manage, add roles and features. Select a role based or feature based installation. Select our server from the server pool. And then we're going to select the checkbox next to Active Directory Domain Services. We're going to install all the required features and select Next. We're just going to leave all the standard features as they are and select Next. And now it's going to go into the installation. I'm going to restart the destination server automatically if required and hit install. We can now see that it has a little spot here that says promote this server to a domain controller. So I'm going to click on that and now we'll get into the deployment configuration wizard. You can see we have some options here such as add a domain controller to an existing domain add a new domain to an existing forest or add a new forest. We don't have an exi existing forest or do we have an existing domain so we're going to add a new forest. I'm going to give it a name which will be testlab.lan select next now we have some options about the functionality level of the forest and the domain we just drop down on the box, we can see that there's different versions of Windows that you can drop it down to or put it on. For some reason the 2019 mustn't have its own support for its own forest functionality level yet, so we're going to have to do it as a 2016 server. In the domain functional level, we only have 2016 as an option, so we're going to have to leave that. We can then specify domain controller capabilities. Would we like it to be a DNS server? Would we like it to be a global catalog server? Or would we like it to be a read-only domain controller? Read-only domain controllers are particularly when you have a site that has clients on it, but you're not going to do any modifications there. It allows them to authenticate locally to a server that's based on the site, but not have any modifications made to it. We're going to leave all these as a standard. You must have a global catalog server and we also need a DNS server so we'll set that up as well. We have to give the directory restore mode a password so we'll just do that and write it down. And select next. If we click on show more here we can see that it cannot create a delegation on the DNS server. We don't have one, so we don't need to do any actions. This is for an existing DNS infrastructure. We'll just click OK and we'll select Next. Here it's asking us to verify the net BIOS name assigned to the domain. This is handy for joining computers to the domains a shorter way so you don't need to type in the fully qualified domain name you can just pop in test lab in the domain box and it will connect so I'm just going to leave that as test lab select next now it's asking us of the location of the database files the log files and the sys file I only have one drive on this server, so I'm going to leave them on C, but typically in a production environment, I always make a second partition and move them onto there. I'm not really sure on the best practice by Microsoft, but it's always worked for me. I'll just select Next, Next, and we'll let it run its prerequisite check. We can now say that it's complaining about a few bits and pieces. 
but none of them are important. So we're just going to hit install. Okay, our promotion to a domain controller has been successful. We can now see that down the bottom we have other user and we have sign into testlab which is our domain name. So we're going to pop in administrator and the password. And we've successfully logged into our domain. We just open up File Explorer. Right click on this PC and go to Properties. We can see that we are now joined to the testlab.land domain. Once this thing stops spinning, oh, we can do it now. We'll go to Tools. And we can now say that we've got all these Active Directory tools enabled and we also have DNS. So if we just open up Active Directory users and computers, then this is how we're going to manage our domain. If we just select on Domain Controllers, we can see that this PC is the Domain Controller and it also is the Global Catalog Server. If we right click on testlab.lan, we can also see the option to raise domain functional level. This is currently set on 2016 which is the highest possible. If you are adding a domain controller to an existing domain you may have other options here. What we might try now is go to our test PC and see if we can join it to the domain. I'm just going to open up File Explorer again. Right click on this PC and go to Properties and then change setting. We're then going to rename this computer or change its domain or work group. Click change and we'll give it a computer name, test PC, and we'll use the net BIOS name that we set before, which was a test lab and select OK. What should happen now is we'll get the authentication box, which we're going to put in our domain credentials. We can now see that our test PC has joined our domain. I'm going to click OK, OK, and close restart. While that's doing that, we might just go back to our domain controller. So what I'm going to do is right-click on testlab.lan, go to New, and create a new organizational unit. I'm going to call this the Test Lab. I'm going to leave the box ticked for, to protect the container from accidental deletion, select OK. We can now see that we have a new OU set up. And I'm going to right click on that again and go to New, Organizational Unit, and put a folder in there called Users. I'm going to right click on Test Lab again and put another one for Computers. If we then go back up to the Computers tab and do a refresh, we can now see that our test client has appeared here. I'm going to drag that and drop it into computers and select yes and we can see it's now in there. I'm then going to go back to the users OU, right click and go to new user and we'll call it our test client. We need to give it a username, we'll just call it test client and select next. We'll just give that a password. if I can manage to type. Uncheck the user must change the password at next logon. We'll just select password never expires and select next and finish. If we then go back to our test PC, we can see that it's applying computer settings. What that's actually doing is applying the computer group policy but I'm not going to go into group policy now. I'll do a separate video on that because it's quite extensive. I'm now going to go to control delete. Select other user and put in our new test client. The 
You can say this is having to complain for some reason. It seems our client's having issues because it's lost its DHCP address. When we've promoted the domain controller, it actually ha has now asked us to authorize a DHCP server. To do this, I'm going to navigate to the server node, select action, and click authorize. Then we're going to press the F5 button to refresh, and we can now say that it's got the green tick next to it. We'll now try to log our client in again. Actually, that's not going to work because our client still doesn't have an IP address. So I'm just going to quickly shut down. Actually, I'll just turn it off. Which you got a bit upset with, but we have now turned it off. Once I turn this back on, it should pick up a DHCP address again. And then, fingers crossed, it will log in. Just select Control Delete again. Put our password in. And now we can see that it's actually logging in correctly. One of the other tools that we need to take notice of now is the Group Policy Management. It does exist originally to apply local group policies, but we can now apply them at a domain level. If we just open it up and drop down domains, we can see that we have the test lab domain here. There's already a default domain policy, which will have some generic settings put into it by Microsoft. You can see here that our test lab OU that we created earlier is now showing up. But I'm not going to go into this on this video. I'll talk about group policies later. I think I'll end the video there. So if you guys have anything you would like me to do a video on in this little mini series, feel free to leave it in the comments. And other than that, feel free to subscribe and drop your comments below. See you guys.